Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Life is a sacred journey community. I am your host, Michelle Pope, and it is Friday. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy it's Friday. I'm really tired this week. I don't know why, but I am. Um, and but I'm so I'm glad it's Friday. And it's actually a holiday, so I know there's probably not a whole bunch of you out there that will be joining us this morning. But if you are, please hit the share button and share that we're going live this morning um, and if not then hopefully you will catch us in YouTube or on our blog talk uh, podcast but hit that share button and good morning to all of you and um, right in the comment area uh, if you're watching this live what do you what are your plans for the weekend what are you getting ready to to do hopefully sleep in and and get some rest but um, I, I wanted to come we weren't going to do um, a live show uh, actually uh, today because we thought that because of the 4th of July weekend it would be better just to kind of take a, a hiatus, take a little bit of a break. Um, but I wanted to talk about um, social gathering and um, and considerations as people come together over the weekend because I just... I really just need people to understand how important it is for you to stay safe and how important it is um, that we all gather together in a way that we're not um, passing coronavirus or that we can stop this thing because we've been sheltering in place. Somebody told me the other day, I think it was Wednesday, it was 122 days. I mean, that's a long time to be sheltering in place. And, and you know, so let's talk about how we're going to do that. So in the state of California, over the last 100 and now, what, 25 days, we have been sheltering in place due to this coronavirus disease that um, is worldwide. And we have different phases that we have been going through. Every state, I was just talking to a good friend, lifelong friend in Boston, and they continue to have more cases as well. I know um, in Baltimore, where I have family members, they have more cases as well. So I, I looked online and it's 40 out of 50 states are on the rise again. And when uh, we met uh, with the Department of Health earlier in the week, they indicated to us, because a lot of people wanted to say, yes, the reason that you're, you're experiencing or seeing more numbers is because more people are getting tested. And, you know, statistically and, and logically, that makes sense. But we learned that's not, that's not the case. It, they actually put that configuration in the statistical data that they're pulling together to tell us about the cases. So it's not because more people have been tested, it's because more people have begun to gather together and these numbers are reflective of um, Memorial Day weekend. And so here we now have another weekend beginning today um, that is coming up and it's a, it's a celebratory time. Um, and what can we do to stay safe? Um, Life is a Sacred Journey is about sharing information and doing it in a way that is more grassroots and on the ground where people are, where we are together trying to make a change in this world. So I'm going to go over the guiding principles for uh, consideration if you're thinking about having an event or if you're thinking about having a gathering. I actually thought about it all the way over here in the car this morning thinking to myself, could, could I possibly invite my son and my daughter-in-law over for some sort of something um, over this weekend? I, I just physically miss them. You know, I see them on Zoom and I talk to them and I text them, but I physically miss them. I think you all understand that. I and and But they have not been a part of my social bubble up to this point. We have not been physically together. So we'll talk about that. But let's, uh, some of the guiding principles from the CDC says, if you are thinking about um, having an uh, outdoor or indoor event with a small number of people participating, please make sure that you maintain that six to 10 foot social distancing. 
And I think that's going to, that's why I'm afraid to have them over because I don't know if I can do that. Okay. And that's, that's my Achilles heel. My family, everybody knows that's my Achilles heel. Uh, I, I don't think that if, since I haven't hugged them in so long, if they walk through the door, my first instinct is going to want to be to hug them. So that's something to think about. Um, I'm too weak. If you're stronger than me, uh, God bless you, but I know that I'm not. So it, it probably, I probably answered my question about inviting them over. We'll probably do it over Zoom. And then you have a higher level of community transmission, the more people that you are around. And so um, that made me think about this risk stuff that they've put in to get together here. So the lowest risk, risk means virtually only, um, there's nobody there. <laughs> there's virtually no risk if you're just alone. You have more risk if you're not maintaining the six feet apart and wearing um, your mask. So again, so if, you, if you're all by yourself, no risk. If you begin to add people and you're not maintaining the six foot apart and wearing a mask, you have more risk. Higher risk comes when you go to a medium size and that means more than 15 uh, people and you're going closer to 20 people. And again, you're not maintaining that six foot distance and not enough air circulation between people. Um, and then if you've got a group of people and um, some have on their masks, some don't, you're not maintaining the six foot distance, six to 10 foot distance, then you are in fact, the risk has, has, has grown. Your percentage uh, um, has multiplied by just those little things. But I wanted to go over what a social bubble is because I think that understanding that helps you to understand why sometimes this may not work. Um, in gathering your families together. So a, a social bubble is defined as the group of people that since March you have been physically close to, okay? That you've been physically close to. So for instance, my social bubble consists of my daughter, my two dogs, <laughs> my administrative staff here at ASEB because I, I see them every single day, at least three of them and a good friend, uh, two good friends that, that um, I help support them being at home and they help support me being at home. So that's been my social bubble since we've uh, been shelter in place and I have not physically been in the presence of anybody else, okay? So now, if I decide to add somebody else to that social bubble, the, the problem is I don't know what their social bubble is. Okay, and so somebody in their social bubble could very well be asymptomatic and everybody in that social bubble could be asymptomatic, but then they go into another social bubble <laughs> and they take the, the disease with them and there's just one person within that social bubble who has a compromised immune system due to asthma or anything else, age, uh, if we bring grandma, grandpa, great parents and, and, and people of my age together, people over 60, okay? And so now your social bubble has changed dramatically and you've got more people that are a part of the possibility of spreading uh, coronavirus. So your social bubble is, uh, defined as the people that you've been close and physically close and in contact with. It does not mean the second household. So for instance, I was a part of um, a group where uh, there was a, a family that came with their family, uh, this family, and they met their family at this social gathering. And they wanted to all be together, right? but they had not been sheltering in place 
uh, at all. This was the first time that they were physically going to be together. And uh, this, the, the persons uh, that were leading this group said, no, you have to sit separately. You can sit within your separate social bubbles, but you cannot combine your social bubbles in this setting. So this is really complex stuff that we're dealing with. And, and also, how do you tell somebody you love, you don't want to, you can't sit next to them. So again, I'm just telling you these things. So as you begin to think about what you want to do this weekend, that you consider some of the ramifications of, of what you need what you need to put into place and what discussions you need to have with your families. And then what happens if someone within that social bubble gets um, or is diagnosed, excuse me, with coronavirus? Then that means that everybody else has to be at least tested. Okay, has to be at least tested. One of the policies that we have implemented here at Alzheimer's Services of the East Bay, where I serve, is to um, we're going to be tested twice a week. I mean, not twice a week, every two weeks, excuse me, that would be awful. Uh, every two weeks, we're going to be tested. And then any participants that we bring back into the program, we will uh, test them once a month. So you also have to think about that. How often are you going to be tested? Do you want to be tested if you haven't been tested yet and have not been diagnosed? Um, uh, all of those factors. So weigh all of that. In our counties, the thing that I thought was interesting is that there are six um, factors that are looked at for reopening any county. And those are, are the cases flat, that means decreasing. Um, has the hospitalizations become flat or decreased? Is COVID-19 uh, hospital capacity less than 50%? Are there 200 tests per 100,000 people daily? Okay. Is contact tracing reaching 90% of confirmed cases and contacts? And is there a 30-day supply of PPE for all healthcare facilities? So those are the six reopening um, sort of factors that are being looked at. I'm, uh, it's unfortunate, so let's, let's go through them county by county here in the Bay Area. And um, for my worldwide uh, listeners, you know, check on your website, see what's happening in your districts, um, because I know you, sometimes in other countries, they don't call the areas counties, they call them districts or whatever. However, your geographic locations are broken down and monitored, please take a look at that and look for those kinds of checklists and barometers so you can measure this stuff appropriately. So in Alameda County, the first is, are the cases flat? And the answer is no. There was a, a big spike uh, in the cases uh, in Alameda County over the last uh, three or four days. And, and so Alameda County is definitely having some challenges right now as far as new cases being diagnosed. Has the hospitalizations uh, decreased? And that's a yes. Is the capacity uh, for COVID less than 50%? Yes. Uh, are there 200 tests per 100 people daily? And the answer is no for Alameda County. And is contact tracing reaching 90% of confirmed cases and contacts? And the answer is yes. And is there a 30-day supply of PPP for all healthcare facilities? And the answer is yes. So you can see two things are happening. One, the in Alameda County is, and I'm just using Alameda County because I happen to be sitting in Alameda County at the moment. Uh, the cases are not um, flat. So that means there are people still being diagnosed, but they're not being hospitalized. That, mean, um, that means the hospitals still have capacity, but people are not being, there are not 200 tests being done daily for each 100,000 people in Alameda County. So that's an issue. Right? That's an issue because we're not testing people. And so we, we really need to get um, better with that in, in Alameda County. And I do know, and I do know Alameda County is working on that feverishly. I sit in at least to three different groups in the county where they are talking about it and trying to get it, get out and get people um, tested within the community. I'm going to go down to Contra Costa County where I live. I'm going to do the no's where, uh, and then I'll go back to the yeses where everything ha is flat. 
Contra Costa County is a no. So there are more people being diagnosed in Contra Costa County. They look very much like Alameda County. So hospitalization is, uh, is, is flat and that's a yes. And uh, capacity 50, that's a yes. So they're doing well there. Testing is still a problem, no. And um, again, is contact tracing. So this is another thing. Alameda County was doing an excellent job at contact tracing, but in Alameda County, is contact tracing reaching 90% of the confirmed cases? And the answer is no. So that means there are people who were exposed to someone who has recently been diagnosed with COVID-19 and they are unaware that they were exposed to the virus, which means if they are a person that is not washing their hands, not using hand sanitizer, wearing their mask down around their nose, they are possibly out there um, spreading the coronavirus. So you can see how simple and easy it is for this, this virus to be um, spread. And so we have an obligation as a humanity to do a couple of things. And I want to go to the other, uh, Contra Costa County was a no on flat. Marin County was a no on flat, meaning uh, in Marin County, there are cases that are high there. So Sister Betty and my, my folks that live over near that way, please be careful. Um, Santa Clara County is a no. They also are having increased cases. So all my loved ones over there, please be careful in Alameda, Contra Costa, Marin, and Santa Clara. Everybody else is kind of, the, the numbers are, are flatlining. So San Francisco, San Mateo, Napa, Solano, and Sonoma. But again, the numbers from yesterday are not a part of this report. And so that could have very easily changed over a very small period of time. So please make sure that you check your, your uh, websites. Uh, and I always say, go to the CDC, go to your um, local Department of Public Health website. They're updating that every Friday. Um, I'm noticing that that's happening on Friday. So go on Saturday morning while you're drinking your cup of coffee, scroll up and down, and you can do that to, to confirm that you know what's going on. So I wanna just make sure we go over a few facts with you um, before I get to the end of our time together. And please, again, hit that share button so that people can follow up later on and get this important information. So we're talking about the cloth coverings. Again, we have to make sure that we're wearing, I see people wearing um, uh, ones that come down over the nose and, and actually, you know, like a more like in the Western, I love Western movies. I was actually um, watching The Magnificent Seven this morning at 3 a.m. <laughs> Great movie, 1960. Oh my gosh, Steve McQueen, <laughs> best movie of all time. Okay, so anyway, cover your nose, cover your mouth, and it comes down to here. Those are great. I could not wear that because of my asthma. I have, I'm like a fish out of water sometimes, and, and um, I start to feel like I'm, I can't breathe, so I prefer the cloth mask that just goes around the nose area, and I have one that's pretty thin, but then I put a, um, a surgical mask in it to absorb the moisture. That's another thing. Wear it whenever you're going out in public, okay? This is not, this is for everybody. I'm laughing only because I cannot believe that people are fighting and arguing and wanting to beat up people um, because they have on a mask and they're refusing to put on one when the sign of the store or the sign of the place says, please wear a mask or that you can't come in without a mask. And so I'm just, I don't know. I just don't understand. So, but all of you, wear your mask when you go out into public places. And if you're an older person, go out in the morning. The stores are still opening early for you. Um, and go out and do your stuff early in the morning. There's more, there's less people out. The air is crisp and you can wear your mask and still have enough uh, air circulating with oxygen if you have COPD or other uh, respiratory uh you know, diagnosis, I have asthma. So it's, it's much better for me to do that. You can take it off when you get in the car as a little reprieve. Um, and I've actually been circulating my air conditioning in my car, which I normally don't do. Um, but I've been doing that. My moonroof open so that I have cross 
because I just need, I need the air. So get as much oxygen, breathe when you're in the car, you know, take in some oxygen in your lungs so that, you know, those of us again with upper, upper respiratory stuff, keep those, keep some oxygen stored up in your lungs. So make sure it covers your nose and mouth, wash it after every use. So I don't even wash my, I was throwing them in the washing machine. I have 50 million of them because people have made them for me and thank you all of you have sent them to me. But I just put it, wash it, and I've actually washed it with uh, uh, peroxide and water. So I'm disinfecting it so I, that I know that I'm killing uh, the virus and bacteria. And then I usually put it outside to uh, dry in the sun. Uh, all of us uh, who remember from sitting at our grandmother's knee, the sun is so good to burn and clean things. That's why they used to put their sheets and, and things outside after they washed them. So put, hang it outside, have enough, excuse me, masks that you can rotate them do, through. Never use a mask on a child under the age of two. Don't do that. They have a hard time breathing. And as you well know, they're shallower breathers than us older folks. And so we, we don't want to cut off any oxygen to them. Again, using a surgical mask or other personal protective equipment um, like the N95 mask, um, those are intended for uh, healthcare workers if you have some in stock. Um, please hold on to them or donate them to a healthcare facility uh, because the because we're not exposed the way that our healthcare folks are, we don't need those forms of masks, but we do need to wear a mask, a cloth mask, uh, something to cover. And I think we're gonna be doing that for a very long time, you know, and I think we have to get used to it. I remember going to Singapore and that was the first thing that I noticed when I, when I uh, arrived in the airport. Everybody had on these green masks and I was just like, what's going on? You know, and, and I realized, you know, pollution was a part of the reason there at the time there was no, there was no pandemic, uh, but pollution was the key. And so the reality is we may have to do this for a while. So let's just dig deep into whatever we need to dig deep into and, and, and know that we're going to have to wear a mask to stay safe and to keep uh, our fellow citizens uh, safe. Other tips, again, six feet, stay at least six feet, and that's supposed to be two arm lengths away from other people. So I was trying to measure that the other day. As everybody who knows me knows, I'm a little nutty. Um, I was trying to figure out, was it two arm lengths when my arms were spread it, uh, out, uh, spread out on the side, or if it was two arm lengths, and did I have to put the other arm at the other arm? But, the, you know, Michelle Pope thinks like that. <laughs> That's what makes life so fun for me in my head. I have so much fun in my head. Cover your cough or sneeze with a tissue and throw the tissue away and then wash your hands, okay? You know, because some of us have allergies and that's okay. I know people are looking around. People sometimes look around at me when I, I'm coughing or sneezing and I'm like, okay, people calm down. I have allergies, but let's get rid of that so it does not become a contaminant for other people. I, what I do when I use my Kleenex, I actually take a clean Kleenex and wrap it in there before I throw it in the trash. I don't know why I do that. I just do. Um, I think working in healthcare has uh, taught me that. So, so, you know, you can think about about. And again, I'm always thinking about other people and the impact of my life on other people. And I'm not telling you to live that way. I wish you would, but um, just think about that. When in public, again, wear a mask, cover your nose and mouth. Don't wear the mask on your forehead. It is not a thermometer. And don't wear your mask down under your nose. It is not a handkerchief to collect um, your fluids from your nose. Cover your nose, cover your mouth. And it's like, you know, it's like this, it's, it's like this. And if you wear glasses, every mask should have something. And that's why I say, you know, I love the one that I have. They, they, she put a little coil thing in the inside. I push it down so there's no air coming up inside of, you know, and fogging up my glasses. So do not touch your eyes, nose, and mouth. So I just did all of that. So after I get off of Facebook Live, I'll be going and washing my hands and, and all of that. But again, I've been all by myself here. Clean, disinfect frequently, and touched objects and everything. So 
Every day I'm cleaning my laptop, I'm cleaning my phone, I've, I've got peroxide with water, with a little peroxide and I'm cleaning, cleaning things. I unplug my, my keyboard all the time and I'm cleaning in between those keys and getting things clean with a little alcohol. So just clean and disinfect everything all the time, you know, doorknobs and, you know, uh, I have a, <laughs> my daughter laughs at me because I have a, uh, a spray bottle with peroxide. I put a little la uh, lavender oil in it so it wouldn't smell so bad. But I and I use that to wipe down my front door. Um, and I have it on the outside. So when I go to open my mailbox after my dear dear mail person drops off my mail, I spray that before I open it. I, you know what can I say? But I haven't gotten sick yet. So you may laugh at my extra measures, but I haven't gotten sick yet. Praise God. Um, stay home when you are sick except to get medical care and wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. And I did uh, time it singing happy birthday uh, twice around is about 20 seconds. So know how coronavirus is spread. Know that it can be spread, spread if you become infected um, and you're in close contact with somebody, um, meaning less than six feet. Protect yourself from other individuals um, by social distancing. And by the way, we're still in shelter in place. I hope you know that. We have not moved out of shelter in place. We've just modified um, shelter in place uh, uh, for certain things. So know that uh, the state of California is still in shelter in place and each county is in different phases of it. But the, as, a, as a state, we're still in shelter in, in place. So um, stay home if you can. That's what I'm going to tell you. Stay home if you can. Stay home, stay home, stay home. I know a hundred and something days is a long time. I was trying to figure out how long, um, uh, and, and for those of you that watch Life is a Sacred Journey and you are not a Christian, uh, just give me one moment here. I was just trying to figure out the other day, like, you know, I, I remembered it was like 400 or something, but how long the people were on the ark. And they, they had to stay on the ark. Uh, because they couldn't get off because of the flooding and everything. And, you know, I think they learned to like each other. Um, they even had animals with them. So, you know, I just think we're going to have to stay in, my people. You know, people, 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 people of life is a sacred journey community. Shelter in place if you can. Go out only if you need to. Take all the precautions that you need to take and realize that uh, we will soon get over this if we, uh, if we do it right. My last comment to you is it is the 4th of July weekend, and I know that all of you who love to do firecrackers and all of that kind of thing, um, please be mindful of those of us who own um, or live with pets. My pets have been going crazy. They're scared um, because you're throwing the firecrackers in the middle of the street. So just be mindful of that you're not alone in this earth. I think that's where we have become. We've, it's become an I and me. And we need to get back to we and we. And if we do that, then one, every we will have 150 days. So Elizabeth said it was 150 days. So we have not been sheltering in place 150 days yet. Okay? So when we get there, we'll talk again. Uh, so thank you, Elizabeth. 150 days, brothers and sisters. We can do this. Let's work together. Let's live together and have a wonderful, wonderful day. And uh, this is Michelle Pope and Life is a Sacred Journey signing off for now. Be safe this 4th of July weekend.